Here we go. Global 3-6. Shintoism in Japan. We're bringing you DVBBS Tsunami! The crazy, crazy song, the tsunami. It fits right in with today's lesson. You gotta love it. Today's lesson is on Shintoism. We'll make the tie to things like uh, natural disasters, like tsunamis, in a few moments, but. We're just getting introduced to the idea of Shintoism. We're going to take a look at the uh, sort of a, the, what a historian might say about uh, Shintoism, right? The historical perspective of Shintoism. Uh, well, we put this under a religion, and it's uh, an early religion that dates back to probably around, oh, maybe like 4 BCE. Right? So right around the, the turn of before the common era into the common area. We're going to say around 4 BCE. So at around 4 BCE, we have the first Shinto temple, or at least a temple that was built to a spirit. We probably shouldn't even call it Shintoism yet, right? But this is the first temple built for a spirit. And uh, from about 4 BCE all the way to about 400 Common Era, so that's a time period of about 400, 450 years, right, to about 400 Common Era. And around 400 Common Era, this series of spirits, right, these, uh, uh, I guess I'll refer to them as mythological spirits because we don't have any scientific proof that these spirits actually exist. Right? These mythological spirits uh, it will grow in how extensive their impact on Japanese life and culture is and lifestyle. And by about 400 Common Era, this is when the Japanese start to refer to the spirit worship as, quote, unquote, Shintoism. Let me change markers on you real quick. This one looks like it's dying a bit. Pop over here, go the old swap out. Trash. You got that little recycle noise? That was like the recycle noise on your computer. Um, and so over about a 400 year time period, the Japanese start to expand and extend their worship of these spirits. And by about 400 common era, they start to refer to the worship of these spirits as Shintoism. Okay. But I guess what we really want to understand is that there's a little bit of a, a metamorphosis that takes place, right? Shintoism isn't a whole lot different from animism. This is a belief that natural spirits are contained in other natural things. That natural items contain spirits and that their spirits these spirits operate on a uh, spirit realm that runs sort of parallel to the world that we live in just double check that that's on the screen i think it's pretty close yeah it sure is okay so natural items like waterfalls trees even natural items like fire and wind uh, natural items like animals, especially deer in Japan, and foxes in Japan are very important, right? These natural items contain spirits, and these spirits operate in a spirit realm that runs parallel with the world that we humans live in. 
Okay, but the spirits are kind of doing their thing in their spirit realm, and we're doing our thing in our human realm. And every once in a while, these two realms kind of bump into one another. And something that the spirits have done in the spirit realm will affect us humans, or something that us humans have done in the human realm will affect those spirits. Uh, but really, two sort of separate parallel universes, if you want to think of like, uh, if you want to think of it like that. Okay. Um, the one thing that should be noted down here, why the change, right? Why did they just go from uh, celebrating these spirits and all these different natural items? Why suddenly start to call it Shintoism? Well, a little competition was out there, right? This was to uh, differentiate. It needed its own name to differentiate between uh, Buddhism, which we haven't learned about yet, but we will and other religions, like Shintoism, and there's some other religions that were out there at the time as well, like Hinduism. Okay, so this idea that the Japanese uh, worship natural spirits, yes, it's animist, but it's going to go a little step beyond. It's really going to become, it's an organized, centralized, we talked about how animism wasn't really organized or centralized. This is going to become an organized, centralized religion in order to separate itself away from Buddhism, which Japanese Buddhism had a lot of spiritual influence from Shintoism as well. They sort of crossed over a little bit. Um, the uh, other things that we should note, I'm going to put a little three-star thing here. Uh, spirituality, right, the spirit realm... was considered to be more pure and more beautiful. So there's an inherent thought in Japan and in Shintoist belief that some of this natural, some of these natural things that are around us in our world, like waterfalls and mountains, those are more pure, in fact, than our human world. Okay, and we, I mean, like, listen, what's not to acknowledge there? I mean, I, I think that that's maybe even something that extends beyond Japanese culture, even into our culture. Anyone that's hiked a mountain and stood atop a mountain, especially during the winter where everything's just like all peaceful and snow covered and all you can hear is the wind, there obviously is kind of like a, a spiritual moment that affects us as humans there where we believe that we really sort of are seeing nature in its most pure state. It has not been dirtied or sullied by human touch uh, or human interaction yet. Okay, so that's just like, we'll keep that purity thing in mind as we go through the lesson. Uh, a historian would also note that these spirits, and I think you picked this up in an earlier video, I think it was an exit question, these spirits were called commies. Not commie, C-O-M-M-I-E, like a communist, but K-A-M-I, a kami. So these spirits were referred to as kamis. And kamis were very amoral. There's the bell, it's not yours, you stick around for a minute. Kamis are very amoral. That's all one word, not two separate words. I didn't get that close enough. Amoral meaning that they don't pass judgment. So this is very different than sort of our uh, Western ideas of religion, especially with like Christianity and Judaism and Islam, where God decides whether humans are acting, you know, good or not. There is no judgment here. That's not the purpose of these gods and spirits. They don't judge. They are very amoral. They don't cast judgment upon humans. They do whatever they want. These spirits, kind of, again, they're in their own little separate realm and universe. They do as they please. It's not necessarily to reward or punish humans. They're just doing their thing. And sometimes what they do happens to interfere with the human realm. And sometimes what we humans do happen to interfere with the spirit realm. Okay, but they do as they please. There is no judgment. There is no reward. There is no punishment. Okay, and that's very, very different than the idea of religion and what we're used to here in our Western world. These gods, these spirits, these kami are not divine. Okay, they make mistakes too. And they're just making those mistakes over in their spirit world. 
And if one of the mistakes they make in their spirit world disrupts the spirit world, disrupts nature in a way that affects us humans, then that's what happens, right? It's not because they're, they're judging us. It's not because they don't like humans. They're not punishing the humans. They are not divine and they make mistakes over in their spirit world too. And sometimes those mistakes spill over. We start it with the song Tsunami. So if we could imagine the God of the ocean or the spirit, the Kami of the ocean might make a mistake or the Kami of the earth might make a mistake, might create like some sort of an earthquake or a tsunami or a flooding event. And that's not necessarily to punish humans. That's just what's going on in their world. Okay, that's what's going on in their spirit realm. And it floods over, no pun intended, that tsunami will affect the human world, but not in a way that's meant to punish or hurt humans. It just happens. Okay, now, uh, really briefly, because I think this really sets us up well, why does Shintoism sort of work like this? Why in Japan did it develop in this way? I think the answer really is contained in the geography of Japan, which is something that we covered way back at the beginning of the year. Japan is an archipelago. Now I'm gonna have to double check my spelling on that one. I think I got it right. If we come over here, there's the second bell, but don't sweat it. Uh, Japan is an archipelago. And here is, again, I'm presenting on the screen a picture of the Japanese archipelago. This is a series of mountains sticking up out of the water. And because it is an archipelago, it sits on, if you see this really dark black line, this is like a fault line, okay? This is like a huge shelf in the ocean um, that a lot of earthquakes revolve upon. And so Japan being an archipelago, they get earthquakes, they get floods. It's a volcan. These are volcanic islands that stick up out of the ocean. There's volcanoes uh, that explode. There's a lot of natural disasters, okay, without even getting into the weather itself, like, uh, you know, um, stuff like typhoons, which is a, a hurricane in the Pacific. You know, it's susceptible to all these natural disasters. And so the Japanese really created a way through Shintoism if I come back to our notes and we can finish up, the Japanese created a way through Shintoism to explain away these natural disasters. So being that geographically Japan is an archipelago, which is a series of islands, we have to acknowledge that there were many natural disasters. And you may want to list them probably in your exit question, typhoons earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, like the song we listen to. These many natural disasters had to be explained. And if we come back to these kami, it's not that these, uh, these spirits are judging or trying to hurt humans. It just happens. And that would explain why these uh, natural disasters happen so much, you know, it wasn't like anybody was out to get us humans. It was just simply part of life as those spirit realm and the human realm kind of interacted and bumped into one another. Okay. Um, that's it. We'll pick up a little bit more Shintoism uh, tomorrow. We're off. See ya.